Now, investors at the Nigerian exchange are digesting more results from listed companies as the market begins to witness profit-taking activities. Mokhtar Mohamed, an analyst at Asar Investments, joins me for this discussion. Mokhtar, thank you for joining us today. Let's get right to it. Uh, the market is uh, digesting more third quarter financial statements from listed companies. And we have a couple on our radar that I'd like us to talk about, starting with Owando, uh, posting a 174% growth in profits after tax, coming in at over 60 uh, billion uh, naira. Could you just walk us through, I know you've seen the numbers, so walk us through the key takeaways from you and just highlight uh, anything, any line item that you found particularly interesting. Well, my takeaway is that um, they are back to profitability, and that's the key takeaway. Uh, but if you look at the profit, they are making about 60 billion compared to when they were uh, before now. Uh, they made a loss of uh, more than that, and so you see an increment in profit of tax of about 166% which is very huge. Um, but again, when you look at that result, what you, you, you I don't like is in the area of in terms of um, cost of sale. Uh, cost of sale is very, very high, uh, an increment of over 1,000% 1, 1, in that area. So uh, when you look at that, it's just uh, the kind of challenges that we have, the micro uh, uh, economic challenges that we, we, we are dealing with. Um, I think they are, they are, they are, they, what was responsible for their profit was the FX devaluation. I mean, the Naira devaluation that helped them. Uh, without that, you would have seen them in the red again. But you have to also give it to them that they just did some acquisition, um, though that was included in, in, in the bottom line. But again, uh, we're talking about about 32 oil as well. So we begin to see um, the, the profitability of that going forward. But by and large, I think it's a good result if you look at where one day is coming from before and, now. And do you think that going forward it could become, I mean, because of this, you know, quite interesting turnaround story and return to profitability for the company with the acquisition of, of course, the Nigerian Ajipo company and all of that, do you think that going forward that this could potentially become uh, an investor's favorite uh, in the oil and gas uh, sector? Well, uh, one day is not developed drama, so that's why I, for now I, I'll, I'll keep my finger crossing because where we thought the worst is over, they came with the suspension of trading because of uh, um, non-release of um, um, a quarterly result, and this has been the issue. We we'll talk about corporate governance. So for now, uh, ordinarily, it should be a stock that you should be excited about going forward, uh, looking at the potential in it, the acquisition and what it will bring to the table. But again, when you look at the drama around it today and tomorrow, investors have not really enjoyed anything from a one day in terms of dividend payout for, for almost 10 years. And so hopefully there will be a recovery. But like I said, the beauty about it is coming from that loss position right. to a profit position, whether it's through um, currency revaluation, but at least they're in profit for now. Mm. I definitely want to watch going forward. Let's move over to the telecom sector. We just, we, you and I had a conversation on uh, Airtel Africa's results last time. Now we have MTN's numbers in. Uh, service revenue group 33.33% uh, at 2.4 uh, trillion now, but uh, the company, the telecoms company, did see a net FX loss of 118.5 billion. Uh, talk to us about the numbers and what your key takeaways are. Uh, my key takeaway is that they are back to profitability. That's the key takeaway for me. Uh, they, there's a reduction in terms of FX losses, even if it is marginal, but about 0.80% um, compared to last time, the losses of, of about 5.19 uh, 5 5 billion. And we are seeing uh, 5.143 3, 3, 8, 3 billion. So definitely that means they are back to profitability. Uh, but again, there's still headwinds that are. Uh, against it, especially the headwind that have to do with FS, just like you, you rightly pointed out. And also this FS is largely driven, or I mean, also compounded by worst um, economic um, issues, high inflation, um, you also net devaluation, that what you have already said, there was the business operation in expensive also. You saw that happening there, and this is all largely due because of the um, um, in terms of um, um, FX. And again, you also mustn't forget that the government also, the regulators have not accepted uh, to to also allow them to increase in terms of um, um, increase their, their, their tariff 
whether for data or for or for um, data or for for the normal call so voice call and data so that also is affecting their bottom line but like i said the good news is that they are out of the wood without the effects um, volatility the effects losses would have been seen a profit of about 118 18.6 billion nine nine months uh, result but again that was wiped off for, because of the um, fs device but i think um, they are a company that are coming out of the wood ground mm. right so let's go into trading for the week is the first trading day uh for the week for the uh uh well second trading day for the new month uh what is your outlook for trading this week uh, i mean we t i believe today we saw the likes of uba gtco access topping uh, stocks by value but what are stocks are on your radar for this week well um radar is still on my radar it's still taking the beating and i think uh, now it's beginning to find its moderation in the market hopefully we'll definitely see a recovery of that before the end of the of the year i mean before the end of the of the month and also be, uh, before the end of the of the of the year I remember that's a stock that is paying eight naira with um, interim dividend for the four. They are just they just been listed some months ago. So that's one stock I'm looking at. Um, also, of course, you still wait waiting uh, for still looking at the banking sector. Even if we have seen some of those third quarter results coming, we are beginning to price it in going going um, um, forward. But like you said, also Wando is a stock that um, investors will still be taking putting their eyes on. But I think. Uh, it's going to be same of saying uh, right. what we will say, like you said, the report, profit taking, uh, volume in terms of value. But for now, the market need a trigger. Unfortunately, that trigger will not come to sometime in February or March. So it will be good entry point, good exit point, good entry point, good exit point. Um, that has helped, what has happened to the market. But by right. December, we might begin to see a portfolio investors re-evaluating their position there sometime. Due to that, you see price increment in some of these equities. Right. I mean, February is a long way off to see a significant movement uh, in the headline uh, index. Uh, but I wanted to ask you, overall, the, the well, my director just told me that uh, we're out of time. But thank you so much, Mokhtar. We'll leave it there. Thank you for talking to us today. Appreciate your time. Mokhtar Mohammed, analyst at Asa Investment.